Verily, verily, the words Jesus used here is Christ's way of introducing a statement of tremendous importance. When Jesus says that, you listen carefully. A few days ago, we celebrated the Jewish holiday of the Jewish New Year. And now we're coming into Yom Kippur. That New Year that the Jews celebrate really means regeneration, a change. It means born from above. That's what the new birth means. When Jesus said, you must be born again, it means being born from above, or born anew, or have a new beginning. Have you ever thought to yourself, I'd like to start life over again? Or like the psalmist said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You can have a new beginning. You can have a new life. All your tomorrows begin today. Nicodemus, the man that we were just reading about in the Bible, was a great religious leader. And he came by night. He probably was afraid of criticism, or he had a desire for a private conversation with Jesus, and maybe that was the only time Jesus could give him. Or maybe he thought about committing himself in a new way. Many of you have thought a long time about religion and Christianity. We're living in a revolutionary and changing world. Man's ability is, man's moral ability is lagging behind his technological ability. And it could mean disaster and catastrophe for the whole human race. But the greatest need in the world at this moment is the transformation of human nature. A famous scientist came from a home that was a wreck. He himself was a secret alcoholic. And he said to me, he said, I've come to you for help. He said, I'm desperate. There's a mountain man near our home in the mountains of North Carolina, and he got lost up in the mountains. And he stumbled onto a mountain cabin. And an old man gave him some advice that I've never forgotten this advice myself. He said, when you find yourself lost in the mountains, never go down. Always go up. At the top of the ridge, you get your bearings and find your way again. We can become lost in the mountain of life. We have two choices. We can go down and get caught in drugs, depression, emptiness, confusion. Or we can go up where we get our bearings and we breathe the fresh air that God has there for us. Jesus said, you must have a personal experience with God. You must come to know me as your Lord and your Savior personally. You can't depend on your traditions. You can't depend on your family. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, all your religion is not enough. Why? The little boy put his finger on it when he said, I guess I was just born wrong. Yes, the Bible says, in sin did my mother conceive me. I was born in iniquity. What causes lying, cheating, hate, prejudice, greed, injustice, selfishness, cruelty, racial tensions? What causes it? What causes perversion? Jesus said, the heart. He said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile a person. They're in our hearts. We were born with that tendency to sin, and as we grow older, we make choices to sin. So we become sinners by choice. And then we become sinners by practice. We practice this sin. It's a disease. Worse than cancer. Worse than AIDS. And the whole world is infected. And you may live to be 70 or 80 or 90 or 100 years of age. But your spirit, your soul, that part of you that will live forever, either in heaven or hell, that part of you is dead. 
dead toward God. And it's sinful. And that's the reason you need forgiveness. That's the reason you need for God to come along and justify you. A radical change must take place before you can get into heaven, before you can be accepted by God. Now what is this new birth when Jesus said you must be born again? Nicodemus asked that question. He said, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter his mother's womb and be born again? He wanted to understand. Jesus indicated, the Bible indicates, that we will never understand all these things. We'll never understand all the mysteries of God. We come by faith. Now, I don't understand how a black cow can eat green grass and produce white milk and yellow butter. I don't understand color television. I don't understand how something can happen in the other part of the world and we can see it just as though it were in our living room. There has to come a time in your own life when you make your own decision and your own choice. And then some people think they can come by their own works, by, being, by doing many good things and great things. That's wonderful. Keep doing them. But that doesn't save your soul. It's a result of your salvation. In Titus 3, 5, it says, Not of works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. You are saved by the grace of God. Now, grace means unmerited favor. Grace means something you don't deserve. You can't work for it. You can't pay for it. It's a gift from God. Have you received that gift? You receive that gift by faith and he comes into your heart and changes you and you become born anew. And then it's not by reformation. Some people think all they have to do is just turn over a new leaf at the first of the year. In Isaiah 64, the scripture says, all our righteousness lies filthy rags in the sight of God. Bring all these good things that you think will save your soul to God and God has to hold his nose because they smell so bad. You see, man sinned in a perfect environment. We had it all. Adam and Eve had everything. But they rebelled against God. They sinned against God. And they passed it on down from generation to generation down to you and me till we are all sinners. Well, how is this new birth accomplished? There's a mystery to it, the Bible says. Jesus said, the wind blows where it listeth. I can't see the wind. I can feel it. I can see the results of the wind but I can't see the wind. The wind blows where it wants to. And then there's the analogy to natural birth. There's conception, just a few seconds, when the sperm and the egg are joined together. And then there's gestation for nine months. And then birth comes, and, and the labor lasts a few minutes or maybe a few days. And how does that become an analogy to the new birth? Well, there's the reception of the Word of God. That's conception. First Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And then Romans 10.7 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching or declaration or proclamation to save them that believe. It's also the work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. You can't come to Christ except the Holy Spirit convicts you and draws you. 
John 16 says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. He'll use a mother's prayers. He'll use a tragic experience. He'll use a pastor's sermon. He'll use a tract or something you've read out of the Bible. The Holy Spirit gives new life. The Bible teaches that we're dead in sin. And you hath he made alive who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Man needs new life. And that new life is brought by the Holy Spirit. That's the new birth. And that could happen to you tonight. You can leave here born anew and start life all over again with Jesus Christ. Being born from above. And it looks foolish in a way for me to tell you that you can come to the cross where Christ died 2,000 years ago and have your sins forgiven and to have certainty in your heart that if you died, you'd go to heaven. You can do that tonight. And I'm going to ask you to do it. You say, well, what do I have to do? There are three things that are important for you to do. First, you must repent of sin. Repentance means that you change your way of living and change your thinking. Be willing for a change to take place in your life. The second thing by faith, and faith and repentance go together. There's no dichotomy. They're, they go together. You repent and you believe. Believe in Christ. You don't believe in anything else for your salvation except the Lord Jesus Christ. And you receive him in your heart and say, Lord Jesus, come in, and he'll come in. Then the third thing is to obey him. Say, Lord, I know I can't live the Christian life, but it's the Holy Spirit that comes and lives through you and in you and gives you a power to resist temptation that you never had before and gives you a new joy and a new peace that you never knew existed. That can all be yours tonight if you're willing to say, Lord, I do repent, I do receive you. I open my heart to you. I'm going to ask you to do what we've already seen hundreds of people do. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat from up here and out there, way back in the back and over here, back there, and come and stand in front and say by coming, I do receive him. I am willing to repent of my sins. I want there to be a change. I want to know that I've been saved. I'm not sure where I am now, but I want to know.